Hello everybody, welcome back to another educational bird video to teach you how to care better for your birds. Yes, my hair has become curlier because it is healing from all the bleaching. So today's video is on 10 reasons that causes your bird to get sick. This is a really important video because a lot of the times people will message me with symptoms of their bird being sick and they have no idea how it happens. Now, not everybody is well educated on the things that can cause your bird to get sick, but there are some niche and some obvious reasons why your bird probably is sick. One of the most common ones that I see is bacterial infections, and these can occur from simply not having a clean cage and having poop or, you know, molding fruits or vegetables and not having a clean cage space. And with that, they can easily get bacterial infections either on their feet, they can ingest it, it can go on their eyes if they rub their face on it. All of these things causes bacterial infections and you want to keep everything clean, make sure you're cleaning at least weekly your cages. And so that's the way they can avoid this bacterial infection and an unwanted trip to the vet visit. The second one is inhalations of any type of smoke or carcinogen. You should never be smoking cigarettes or marijuana or any type of smoke around your bird. Now, if you are someone who smokes, do it outside in your balcony, but never in the room or the house. It does not matter the ventilation that you have. Always do it outside because these are carcinogens that your bird, their lungs are so tiny that they're not going to be able to handle the same amount that you're smoking. So it's kind of like secondhand smoking to them, but it'll kill them all, like in a day or two, basically. I said this before in a previous video, but there was this one girl who once told me that she liked to smoke weed around her bird. And it was funny because it chilled the bird out and it was a green cheek conure. And she said he died at five years old and she had no idea why. It was because you smoked around him. You killed him. Simple as that. So along with smoke, I'm also going to include candles and any incenses or essential oils. These should never be around your bird. And yes, they are uh, lifestyle changes that you are going to have to make because you cannot be having this around your bird because again, the smoke, it's they're so sensitive to it that you can kill them. Again, birds have these tiny little lungs that that work very hard and if you have smoke and they are inhaling it and those carcinogens are not going to get processed the same way you're able to process them and probably smoke for a long time until it actually makes an effect in our body then you're literally putting your bird for a death sentence and with that i am going to put include aerosols and perfumes because these are also things that anything sprayed into the air that they inhale such as cleaning products perfumes febreze all of those types of things that you're going to spray in the air can also kill your bird because again it is sensitive to them the third one is a very common one which is just injury i've seen birds get injured over things that are so 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 inevitable. I mean it. I have seen birds get injured because people didn't teach them what windows are and they got scared and flew into a window and they got a head injury. I've seen people who don't understand that you are not supposed to have ceiling fans on and their bird flies into the ceiling fan, smacks themselves and probably doesn't survive. I've seen people who don't train their bird for exposure therapy to loud sudden sounds and they get scared, they smack themselves against something. Pretty much head trauma and internal bleeding are the most common causes of injury and bird death that veterinaries will see and that most likely occur. The fourth one is a seed-based diet. You can give your bird seeds in moderation and everything should be within moderation. Seeds are usually used as treats, as training tools, but not as a diet. Now imagine seeds are the equivalent of basically having a piece of chocolate. Now it's delicious, it's addictive, you know, we love chocolate, unless you're someone who doesn't love chocolate. Just imagine anything, any pastry that you like. And you can eat it, you know, after your lunch, maybe you have a little chocolate and that's it, right? But imagine you have chocolate every single day and that's the only thing you ever have. That's basically what you're doing when you have an all-seed diet. You're giving your birds 
no nutritional value and a very high fat content. And this can lead to fatty liver disease, to obesity, it can lead to heart attacks, cardiovascular issues, arterial sclerosis, it can lead them to be, have lack of exercise. There's just so many things that come with them an all seed diet that just, it's so inevitable. And I have videos on switching them from pellet to, from seeds to pellets i have videos on chalk that you should be giving them birds are creatures that need a variety of a diet they can't just have just one diet this is why birds are difficult to own not just because of this reason there's so many reasons but this is one of them because they need a variety of diets and therefore they need to be eating different fruits, different vegetables, different, you know, pellets, so many different things and their diet can be so complex and each parrot has a different dietary need. The next one is lack of oxygen. Now this one might sound a little weird to you, but I guess this one kind of mixes in with the carcinogens and the smoking and, you know, the aerosols, but a lot of the times people don't understand that you cannot have a bird and have a stuffy apartment. You need to have an air purifier if you're going to have a bird. Um, if you have windows, you need to make sure that they have mesh netting so that you can open them up and that they can, you know, get fresh air coming in and that they can breathe fresh air because we all know the difference of being stuck in your room for a while and then going out and breathing in fresh air and how nice that feels. Now, if your bird is harness trained, that's even better to take them out for walks and just get them some of that fresh air, that sunlight, but do not have a stuffy apartment, a smoky apartment, an apartment full of chemicals, with bleach, nothing like that. You want to keep your place clean so that they can be clean. Now, usually there are signs that your bird is lacking oxygen. There's a difference between a bird yawning and a bird lacking oxygen. Now, when a bird yawns, uh, if you've ever seen a bird yawn, it probably looks something like this. Now, when they do this continuously and continuously and maybe scratch their ear a bit, this means that there's also a pressure change and that they are lacking oxygen and you need to just air out or get the fan going or just get something for them to breathe because they are lacking that oxygen that they need the next one is dehydration and hunger now lots of people don't realize that you need to clean out their water bowl quite a few times a day because some parrots like to make soup which is really annoying this is mostly with the conyers um some birds like to poop in their water or bathe in their water and you're going to want to be People don't understand that you need to be on the watch and cleaning out their water bowl so that they continuously have fresh water. Usually you will be changing it about three times a day. And you also need to have sanitary stainless steel bowls so that you can clean them every single night and disinfect them. Because if you're not disinfecting the bowls, you're just harvesting bacteria. Plastic is the worst choice because it harvests bacteria a lot easier than anything else. You also want to make sure that they always have an access to food. So for example, when I keep them up here, they always have a pellet bowl. And with their pellet bowl, they are always able to have something to eat. And I also leave them some treats on the floor like you guys have seen in my other videos. And I will give them some almonds, some walnuts, uh, just things like that all over the floor. And they'll come and pick it up. They'll snack on that. They'll go eat their pellet, eat, drink some water while I'm gone. Because sometimes I just need a little break to myself. So I'm not constantly in the room. Make sure that they always have a bowl full of food that they have access to if you are not going to be present or supervising them as well if your bird is clipped which should not be unless due to a medical reason or a disability which you can check my video on how a wing clipping can kill your bird if your bird ever falls to the ground and they have no way to get back onto their cage to get to food or water and you are gone for the day they're going to start Birds have an extremely fast metabolism that can really quickly kill them because they don't have access to food or water. Next one is overheating. Your bird can get sick from overheating. Yes. Overheating can lead to dehydration and dehydration can lead to a seizure and a seizure can lead to death. So you want to make sure that the temperature of your room is always well, especially if you live in warmer climates and there's lots of sun coming in. Make sure that the room is not overheating. They're not panting. They're not like, you know, seek. they have water access. Try and, kill, 
try and cool the room down so that it's anywhere between 20 to 25 degrees celsius i don't know what that is in fahrenheit for all my american watchers you want to keep the room around that temperature make sure it's not passing into like 30 degrees celsius because that is way too hot and i would be overheating as well and along with overheating the next one is freezing one of the things that i've noticed has gotten a lot of birds sick and people don't realize is that if you leave them near an open window and a cold draft comes in they can get sick that's how fragile birds are the smallest things will get them sick like a draft a little cold little chill draft from the window will literally get them sick and bam your bird's dead and sadly that happens so much and people don't realize it you also want to never keep your room anywhere below 20 degrees celsius again sorry for my american viewers i don't know what that is in fahrenheit you want to keep the room relatively warm above 20 degrees celsius quaker parrots can maybe resist 18 degrees celsius but i do find that they are more comfortable with 20 degrees so if you guys want on amazon i'll leave the link down below there is a ventilation uh installer that you can personally change the temperature uh, so it just changes the temperature in your room and not the whole household in case everybody else in your household is complaining about the temperature being too hot But I'll leave a link for that because that really helps regulate the overheating and the freezing You will know if a bird is overheating when they are spreading out their wings and they're panting You will know when they're cold when they're really puffy and they can shiver Sometimes you'll just see them shiver and they'll try and like really keep warm and they'll be hidden in a little corner those can be signs of overheating and freezing. The next one is ingestion of toxins. There are so many things that they can accidentally eat that will kill them. Lead poisoning, that's one of them. This can be caused due to cheap jewelry, to pencils, to metal and wires and so many things. Plants. Not every plant is safe for your bird. Please check down below my description. I will be leaving a link where you can search up a specific plant to make sure it is safe for your bird. I have had this in my other videos and I've talked about it before, but if they ingest a plant that is toxic to them, depending, some are more mild, some are will kill you instantly, you should not be having them in your house. And you're feeding them apples. Make sure they're not ingesting the apple seeds. Apple seeds contain cyanide and maybe to a person it's not enough to kill them, but to a bird, yeah, they're going to kill them instantly. You're not going to be able to even make it to the vet. So usually when I'm feeding them apples, I'll cut them a piece away from the seeds and that way i can be 100 percent sure that they're not going to be ingesting anything teflon anything cooked on teflon or cooking teflon around them can kill them as well even the smoke inhalation of teflon which kind of adds in into the carcinogens and smoke never have anything with teflon in your house i will also be living down in the description down below of a pot and pan set that you can get which is an amazing quality it's made out of aluminum and is eco-friendly safe i know it sounds crazy and people are like oh come on like they're far away from it it can kill them and it has happened eating food that's poisonous to them like avocados chocolate alcohol coffee onions garlic salt maybe they're chewing on drywall or they ate bleach or they're licking dust out of a place that you didn't clean yeah it's happened mango when she was a baby got an ulcer because she went up to a very tiny corner and just before i could get her down she took a big lick out of the dust and got an ulcer so we had to put her medicated Thank goodness she is all healed. She is completely better. This was a very long time ago, but I'm just saying be careful. Please be careful. It may not seem like a big deal to us humans, but to birds, they are so small and fragile that you do have to be very careful. And the last one is exposure to another sick animal or an animal that can get them sick. Exposing them to wild animals especially, they carry a lot of diseases. They carry foreign bacteria or flora that your bird doesn't have an immunity to because they're captive. So if you ever take your bird outside and, you know, there's poop on a branch and they try and eat it, that poop can be carrying and transmitting a disease or foreign bacteria that they don't have immunity to. They're outside and, you know, for whatever reason, a bird comes up to them. Don't let them touch them. Don't let them grab feathers from other birds. Don't let them just, don't let them interact with any wild animal because not only is this dangerous, but they can transmit something to them that can kill them. And an animal that is a household animal that can kill your bird is a cat. 
not just because cats by instinct hunt birds, but because the saliva of a cat can kill your bird. It is toxic to them. And this is something a lot of people don't realize. And I know that there's sometimes cute videos out there with like, oh, my cat and my bird getting along. And I just, just don't approve of this at all. Like, particularly with cats. I, maybe with dogs, there's a lot of dogs that can be very gentle and kind and they're not like, you know, that dangerous. But like cats, I just would never risk a cat and a bird together. Hi, Mango. Oh, hi. Mwah. So Mango came for the end of the video. So that's perfect timing, hi. Anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. And I hope that this helped you guys to understand more things that can get your bird killed and sick and just that you guys can watch out for them so that nothing happens and that you guys are more cautious and more educated every single time. Cause that is the goal of my videos to just educate you guys and help you not make mis like very silly mistakes that may cost the life of your bird because it's not worth it it's better to be educated so if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a like hit subscribe now mango screaming uh check out our social media links down below and as usual we'll see you guys next time bye, -bye. say bye mango bye